Hi and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Natalia and in this video we're going to talk about the fact that I was on the AIP diet, the most restrictive diet that I've ever done and then I made a mistake. And what led up to that mistake as well as I'm going to delve into emotional eating and how we use that sometimes food. We use food as a crutch or as a way to cope with stress and anxiety. I am also going to talk about perfectionism. If you're a perfectionist, you'll relate to this video a lot. And then I'm going to talk about what I'm going to do since I broke the diet, whether I'm going to continue, if I'm going to make changes, or if I'm going to do something else for my endometriosis. So let's start there. I started the AIP diet, the most restrictive diet that I've ever done, because I have endometriosis. It is a health condition that affects women's reproductive system. And basically, I didn't know this until very recently, but all of my digestive issues and the fact that I became lactose intolerant again last year in um, January 2023, it was most likely and it is because of my endometriosis. So it's getting really bad. And I was researching online and found that the autoimmune protocol diet, the AIP diet, tends to help with symptoms. And basically it's about finding the foods that are triggering inflammation, discomfort, abdominal pain, acne, and so forth. It is a very difficult diet. Why? Because you eliminate refined sugars, processed foods, uh, nightshade vegetables. I also included carciferous vegetables because they cause me a lot of indigestion. They do cause the average human indigestion, like if you've ever had broccoli or cauliflower, you'll notice that you feel a little burbly. And then I also included fruits, which is not something that usually you include in the AIP diet. But I've seen that my stomach gets really upset from certain fruits. And on the first week of the diet, I had nectarines. Worst reaction ever. I felt bloated, had the pain, had the discomfort. And I'm sorry, but when I say bloating, it's not just physical. So here are a couple videos of what I've been dealing with when I say bloating. You only see the fact that my stomach is big. What you do not know, and perhaps what I should clarify is, bloating isn't the only symptom. I have sharp abdominal pain. Sorry, this might be too, too much information, but I have gas. I fart. I don't want to fart, but like... It has to go somewhere, and if you keep it in, I don't know if you've ever tried holding it in, it's not comfortable. And then a lot of acne, a lot of burblies, like your stomach just starts talking. <laughs> and that publicly is just so uncomfortable. Everything's so uncomfortable. This whole situation is uncomfortable. So I tend to stay at home. I tend to cancel plans. And it was basically... All experiences, all the bloating, all the indigestive indigestion and digestive issues, they were ruining my social life. They were ruining my daily life. It was just so hard to leave the house and do everything that I wanted to do. So I got on the diet, had the best results. After the first week and really like sticking to it perfectly, I, I felt, oh gosh, I felt liberated. Like I didn't have to worry about reacting poorly to foods because I knew anything that I ate was going to sit well and I was going to wake up the next day feeling not flat, but like, yeah, just really good. And I wouldn't have to worry about the burbles or the gas or the abdominal pain. My acne was starting to clear up a bit. And, and then the 24th day happened. So I went 23 days perfect, beautifully. And then day 24, I had an intense craving for chocolate chip cookies because of something I saw on Instagram, kind of triggered me. I always kind of report the things that I don't want to see on my Instagram. In case you didn't know, if there's something you don't want to see on your feed, you can just put not interested in seeing. So I kept doing that, but obviously I'd already seen it and a couple negative situations happened. So it's not just I had this craving. I also I had a bad experience at the gym, felt uncomfortable, and then I had to have I have to have cold showers right now. This seem this sounds really silly. My water heater broke, 
and I'm trying to fix it. I'm trying to replace it. I have to get a new one. But obviously it takes time to order to get the guys here and I have to take cold showers. So I was just in a very, very bitter mood and I felt like there were so many things. I felt a lot of anxiety and I reached out to my friends. I reached out to my mom, but nobody was getting back to me in time. So I just said, you know what? I, I can't do this. And I, deci I decided I was going to go for a run. The shorts that I wore were not appropriate and this sounds so stupid, but it made me feel so uncomfortable. A guy looked at me wrong. I came home. I, I basically started crying because everything felt wrong and I felt a lot of pressure, a lot of anxiety. And I was like, you know what? I know that a crepe, a chocolate crepe will fix this. And this is where emotional eating comes in. So when I was younger, I used to play sports, but when I got injured, I started turning to food. I love to bake. I love to cook. And I would bake chocolate chip cookies and cupcakes. Mind you, I was like 12, 13 when I started baking for myself and I decided, you know what, I'm going to ease my stress and I'm going to make myself feel good with food. If you're not aware about the biological side effect, like your body understands that foods high in refined sugar, saturated fat, calories, like just a lot of um, great things that your body says, this is great for survival, it will crave it. So if you have cravings for fried chicken, cupcakes, cookies, like things that you know, you know, your brain knows they're not good for you. But obviously your animalistic instinct, like your body's survival, like animal side says, and <laughs> there are some people that experience the complete opposite. There are some people that when they get stressed and anxious, they don't feel like eating. They don't feel like resorting to food. They don't have a spike in ghrelin. Ghrelin is the hunger hormone that makes you want food. And your body obviously doesn't want vegetables. I don't, I don't think anybody's ever told me that they have a craving for carrots. Unless they're like super, super healthy and they're trying to you know, stay on track with their goals. But mostly when people say I have a craving, it tends to be, I have a craving for French fries. I have a craving for this. And it's super high in saturated fat, super high in refined sugar, super high in like calories. Basically what I'm trying to say is emotional eating is normal. It's your body's response, a natural response. Not only that, but if you live in the Western culture and if you're American, we see in movies, we see in day to day, people saying, oh, I just want to eat my feelings. And we normalize using food as a crutch. We normalize using food as a way to cope with our negative emotions. When somebody goes through a breakup, we know that they might, you know, end up gaining weight or they might gorge on ice cream and chocolate because it's just the tendency and we've normalized it, which is kind of good, but also kind of bad because we don't correct it. We don't say, Hey, let's say going for a run, you know, like let's normalize doing exercise to deal with stress. When I became a nutritionist and a personal trainer, I worked on this. This is something that I struggled with for a very long time. Anytime I went through a big move, like when I moved from China to the United States, or even when I moved from the United States to Spain and I started university, I would use food as a coping mechanism. I would use food as a way to deal with my negative emotions. And it has been very hard to rewire my brain and to basically get rid of that bad habit and say, I'm going to use exercise as a way to de-stress. I've been very successful the past couple of years, but not always perfect. I mean, nobody's perfect. And it is a tendency from childhood so it's a lot harder when you grew up with something and you've had it for multiple years. Yeah, like I started using food as a coping mechanism when I was 12. And I started working on improving my health and improving that habit when I was 20, 21. So like multiple years of always going to food when you're stressed, it takes time to rewire that habit. So I went for crepes. Crepes made me feel amazing, I'm not going to lie. I felt really good and I enjoyed every bite. 
Now, if you're going to use food as a coping mechanism, please, please do not shame yourself after eating the food. I used to do this, and if you binge eat or if you struggle with bulimia or an eating disorder, you've most likely experienced this where you bully yourself. You make yourself feel ashamed of eating the food. You make yourself, ne- you know, like feel guilty, and that's not helpful. If you're going to eat the food, accept it and just just enjoy every bite. And when you're done, move on. And, and it's easier to, easier said than done. Trust me, I know it. When people would tell me, just just move on, just okay, so you had too many cookies, you had too much ice cream. It was like, I wanted to just grab them and shake them and tell them, but I, I don't know how to do that, you know? So I like to tell myself, you are kind, you are beautiful, you are smart. Obviously, if you're a man, you can say other affirmations that you prefer, but I see that affirmations help me a lot. So after I ate the chocolate crepes, I kind of just sat on the couch, worked a little bit, and every time I found myself wanting to shame myself, I'd say, you are kind, you are smart, you are beautiful. And saying that over and over again and out loud helps a lot to accept that it's okay. You made a mistake or you indulged. Just continue. You are kind, you are smart, you are beautiful. And you are. You are. After the crepes, then the very next day, I got right back on track. I told myself, I'll just go back to the AIP diet, and I'll mention this on my YouTube and my Instagram. I was at the gym, and my best friend, one of my best friends, called me, and he's like, I'm here in the Barcelona airport. I would love to see you. Let's get together. I'm going to meet with my friends for dinner. Why don't you join? And I kind of, I hate that I told myself, well, because yesterday you ate the chocolate crepes and you're kind of inflammated now, might as well eat out, like it'll be fine and you can find something that you can sort of pick at but not eat completely. I find that that was like a stupid, not even stupid, but like a silly reason. But I made that decision. I said yes, I went out with my friends, I went out with him and his friends, and we ate Peruvian food. We ordered a lot of food and we shared it all, so it's easy to just pick at things, and things that I knew weren't going to upset my stomach completely. I had a little bit of a flare a couple hours later, but it wasn't really bad, and I basically stuck to the white fish. I didn't eat much of anything else, and the next day, I told myself I'm going to get right back on track, and I did. I ate chicken with avocado. And then my best friend was like, hey, like he, he mentioned, he's like, Venezuelan food. I haven't had it in a while. My friends have never had it. Do you want to go? Like, do you want to either make arepas or do you want to like go to a restaurant? And I was like, I, I love food. I'm so, I'm such a foodie. I'm such a foodie. And it kills me that I can't share memories and experiences with my friends related to food. In this certain instance, like the certain circumstance, I was like, I don't see this friend, but ever. He doesn't live in Barcelona, and I only get to see him like once a year, if I'm really lucky. So, yeah, you know what? Let's go for Venezuelan food. Let's go to a restaurant. And I felt like it would be so much easier going to a restaurant, because if we order a dish, I can just order a dish that I don't really want, and then just kind of pick at it a little bit, and something that's slightly easy in my stomach. Although Venezuelan food, if you don't know what Venezuelan food is like, it's very fried. It's got a lot of butter and oil. It's a lot of refined carbs. And it's a lot of um, just foods that are complicated to digest. So I I knew going into this that this is going to cause a bit of a flare, a bit of inflammation. We got to the restaurant and we, we decided to share all these dishes. And I explained to my friends, hey... So, like, I have endometriosis. It's affecting my digestive system. I'm just going to pick out a couple things. And we ordered tequeños. Oh, my God. I am lactose intolerant. Extremely lactose intolerant. But I had to eat at least one. (laughs) I was like, I just want one. Boy, do I kind of hate myself for making that decision. Because obviously, oh, gosh. 
I I woke up the next morning. I'm just gonna skip. The, it's a very long story, but I ate a little bit of everything that I knew wasn't supposed to. Fried yuca. Oh my gosh, so good. I had the best experience with my friends. We enjoyed it. We sat there in silence, and we just ate, and then we started talking after the dinner. That's how good it was. But the next day, I, I actually I couldn't sleep the whole night. Like my friends and I hung out for a couple more hours, but I had such terrible abdominal pain, and my stomach started to like get gassy. And I was like, I I don't want to do this. Like this is so embarrassing in public. You just don't you don't want those scenarios, right? Like it's I'm not the only person, and uh, oh, I get so anxious even thinking about this. I went back home, could not sleep. All of Friday night, I was just in so much pain, abdominal pain and just uncomfortable. And then I woke up and I took this video. It was hard to take this video and I cried. Thing is, I wasn't crying because of what I look like. This is, I'm sharing this with you because this is what I look like. This is the only visible symptom that I have. Oh, my puppy's coming. Wait, give me a second. You're good? Say hi. I'm in the back. Here. <laughs> so, bloating is the only visible symptom that I can show you. And I look like I'm at least two to three months pregnant. Like, it is so uncomfortable. Not just the way that I look, but the feeling. And I wish I had explained this better on my Instagram because a lot of you messaged me and I appreciate so much you were like you look gorgeous like don't worry your physique is great but it's not just about my physical look it's that that's what I look like what I feel like is so much worse I have extreme abdominal pain it feels like a sharp object is being pushed into my stomach and try not to cry because it's just so uncomfortable the feeling and the symptoms that I feel and then I'm so, I'm sorry to say this, but I, I think it's, I, I need to be brutally honest here. I am so gassy. Oh my gosh, I don't want to leave my house. I want to be able to like not have to hold it in. So I have to cancel all of my plans. And I had plans this weekend. Oh, I was so upset. I had plans to go to the beach. And obviously I'm not going to go to the beach. I don't want to be around people. Thankfully, I live alone and I'm with my dog. So I just kind of... Yeah, oh gosh. And on top of that, it's like all this pressure. I can't, it's so hard to put pants on. I put the leggings on and I think part of the reason why I started crying with the leggings on is because it hurts. Actually, let me let me show you a clip that I took while I was crying. <laughs> so I have been crying most of the morning <laughs> because... Of I just want to go work out and I just want to go out and it's such a pretty day and at the same time I don't I don't want to go out and do something that's going to embarrass myself and I just feel bloated and it's just like I'm trying to calm down but it's it's not too bad no it's pretty bad I don't feel good I don't feel good at all and I just <laughs> I would almost rather just not eat this whole weekend but um it'll be okay it's not even the appearance it's just feeling the feeling of being so <laughs> it like it hurts to even have something like around my band like I just kind of want to like put this down in my waist and like leave it here and then just like l leave it out because it's just it it hurts to have anything here and I don't want to feel like this and I don't want to have this and I just I want to get rid of it and I don't want to feel bloated with gas and maybe this is too much information but like I don't I don't want to like fart in front of people <laughs> I can't even believe I'm saying this online like I'm sorry but it's not just the bloating it's the pain it's the fact that if I'm out in public, I have to go to the restroom and make sure that, like, it's not, you know, it's just rude and it's uncomfortable for everybody, not just myself, but the people around me. And I don't want 
my reputation to change just because of my health condition and what I'm dealing with. So the symptoms are not just about what I look like when I have a bad reaction, when I have a flare. It's also what I have to endure, like the feeling. And um, going further, perfectionism, oh gosh. The perfectionist in me wanted to shame myself and bully myself so badly. I wanted to tell myself, and I, I caught myself before I said this, so. You are not worth paying attention to, being friends with. You are not worth having all the things that you have. And I, at one point I even said, why do you even have this body if you're not going to take care of it? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I take care of myself so well. But the perfectionist in me gets to be so angry and mean. It's really hard as a perfectionist to say it's okay to make a mistake and to keep going. You almost want everything to be just perfect, and when it's not, you self-sabotage. I find that whenever I want everything to be just right, the moment it doesn't go right, I start making more decisions that are going to make the situation worse just because I feel like it's not worthwhile anymore. And I hate that. I hate that so much. So part of me wants to say that I was self-sabotaging, after I ate the chocolate crepes by making the decision to eat out with my friends twice. But here's the thing. I don't see that friend but ever. I see him once a year. And you don't have to be perfect. As I like to usually say, you should be consistent and persistent in your pursuit of success. It's okay to be hard on yourself as long as you're not being cruel. And bullying because most likely those negative emotions and that negative reinforcement is going to cause you to make decisions that are not in your best interest so I'm getting back on the AIP diet tomorrow it has been helping me it has made a world of a difference and it has helped me to decrease my inflammation it has helped me to be consistent with my goals not just my physical goals, and I have physical goals, but also my health goals. I feel like, obviously, if you're not eating processed foods and refined sugars, you're decreasing your chances of cancer, you're helping your acne, you're helping your body function, you're helping your brain, and my cognitive function has been a lot better, so that's really great. And when it comes to what I'm going to do forward with this diet, I'm implementing a Disciplines day off meal. <laughs> I would call it a cheat meal, but cheat meal has a very negative connotation. And I don't want to associate anything that's pleasurable. And like this is a conscious decision to eat foods that I know will cause inflammation, but it helps me to probably stay a little bit more on track. I don't want that to be negative. I don't want to associate anything negative with that specific experience. So I'm not calling it a cheat meal. I'm calling it a disciplines day off meal. Because a day off is a good thing. Especially when you work so hard. And if I'm consistently on it, my discipline is perfect every day for 28 days, I think my discipline can take a day off. I think it's okay if I eat one meal. I know will cause inflammation, but see it's also going to be planned so I can kind of help to decrease any terrible scenarios like I'm not going to have Venezuelan food I'm sorry that was too much <laughs> my my disciplines day off meal will not include a lot of greasy fattening or not fattening uh, saturated fat because it's just ooh, <laughs> it was too much and I'll plan it a couple days in advance but I know that after 28 days I'll plan that one meal and Oh, I'm excited to get back because I don't have that much of a big belly today, but I do have a little bit of abdominal pain and bloating still. So, If you haven't seen my 21 day video where I talk about why I was so consistent and how I was so successful with sticking to 24 days, actually 23 full days of no processed food, no refined sugar, a very limited diet, 
If you want to know how I did it, go check out that video. And my next video will most likely be about getting back on track and then just a couple life updates. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video.